I was actually in the work energy uh, section, not the conservation of energy. So I'm going to work this out uh, using the work energy, using the fact that the sum of all work, uh, including springs and gravity, uh, equals only delta T, the change in kinetic energy. All right, so we've got a 10-pound block. It's pressed against this spring so that the spring is compressed two feet uh, when it is at A. So it doesn't say the spring's length, it just says the spring is compressed two feet. That is, that is going to be our X, uh, right, when it's at A. If the plane is smooth, determine the distance D measured from the wall to where the block strikes the ground. Neglect the size of the block. All right, so uh, initially I was, I was kind of thinking this is just a projectile problem, right? No, it, it is not a projectile problem from A to B. A to B, it is not a projectile uh, problem. Um, <clears throat> so from A to B, we've got to do something else. So I'm going to use um, work energy from A to B, and, and then I think I'll use projectile from B to, we'll call this uh, C, um, so that I can actually solve the, uh, so that I can answer the question. All right, so using work energy uh, from A to B, uh, the sum of all the work done uh, equals change in kinetic energy. So uh, what things have we seen that uh, do work? The spring, one-half K, and let's look at our uh, formula sheet. The work done by a spring is X1 squared minus X2 squared plus mg, and here, this is the work done by gravity, uh, h1 minus h2, plus uh, maybe we have a force times a distance, um, so that's all the different types of work. Now on the right-hand side of the equation, uh, one-half mass times v2 squared minus v1 squared, right, the v final squared minus the v initial squared. All right, we do have a spring, we do have a change in height. Uh, we, we actually do not have an external force times the distance. The only other, the only kind of external force that I could think of here is the normal force of the incline, but that normal force of the incline is always, is never in the direction of the displacement, so it's not a force times distance FD. All right, so let's plug in what we can. Let's think about this spring. One half, the K of the spring is 100 pounds per foot. And then the x initial, right, x is the amount of stretch or compression. So, so yes, initially it was uh, compressed by 2 feet. So we'll have 2 squared minus. And final, uh, this, spring, th this block leaves the spring. The spring is free to do whatever. And so the spring naturally will just go back to uh, its unstretched position. So minus zero squared. All right, so there's my one half. There's the work done by the spring. Plus then mg. Now I could do mg, but uh, m separate from g, but mg is the weight, and that is this 10 pounds. Uh, so I'll say 10 pounds times h1. That's h initial minus h2, that's h final. Remember, I'm just going from a to b, and I didn't really mention this. I can't go straight from a um, to, uh, I, can't, I can't go straight from b to c uh, because I don't have all the information. I need to do work to go from a to b, get some information about b, then I can go from b to c as a projectile uh, to finish this problem. So going from a to b, initially, you know, let's call this our zero height and final. So initial, that would be zero and final, three feet. So zero minus three feet. Let's be careful with, you know, what goes first, minuses and pluses. So that's what we have on the left-hand side of our equation. The right-hand side of our equation, one-half mass. All right, so now this is mass. The 10 pounds was weight, so 10 divided by 32.2. This is 10 pounds divided by feet per second squared. That's technically a slug, uh, but my units are gonna work out if, we, if we're careful. 
and V2. I don't know. This is what I'm actually going to find out. I'm going to find out the velocity uh, at B right there. I'm going to find the velocity at B right there. So VB squared minus V initial. Uh, did it start from rest? Uh, yeah, yeah. It, 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 start, it, it was compressed, and then it was let go. Right. started from rest, so we've got a zero out here squared okay and all my units are pounds feet pounds feet pounds feet per second and feet per second uh, so all my units are going to work out and I'm gonna get the velocity at B 33.09 feet per second now now that I know it leaves the the ledge it leaves this incline at 33.09 feet per second in this direction, right? It, it's leaving it in the direction of the incline. It's leaving it at this four three, uh, so the four three five direction, with a velocity of sorry, where, with a velocity of thirty three point oh nine. Now I can. Think about it as a projectile. I can think about it as a projectile from here to here. I just was doing work energy from there to there. All right, so and, and I could actually do um, work energy from B to C, but that wouldn't give me D. D is nowhere in my work energy equation, but it is in my projectile equations. All right, so projectile from B to C. Knowing that it's going at 33.09, knowing that it's going up at this 4, 3, 5 direction. All right, how do you do projectiles? I like to separate X from Y. Uh, I could use any of my constant acceleration equations. I like to use uh, this, uh, I think it's the third one. SF equals S initial plus VIT plus one-half a t squared. All right, so in the x direction, <clears throat> where is it going? Uh, it's going from, we'll call this our zero, it's going to d. It's going to d, so d, all right. And now what is this v initial? That would be 33.09, but I'm only the x direction. So the 33... 0.09, the four fifths component times t. Don't forget that t. The acceleration in the x direction is zero. All right, so I've got an equation right here. D is uh, 33.049 times four fifths uh, in the y direction. Remember, we're going from b to c. In the y direction, it starts up here. It ends down there. What, what do I want to call my ground? Uh, I think I'm still going to call my ground down here. So I'm going to say it starts at 3, ends at 0. So I'm going to say it starts at 3, ends at 0. 0 equals 3 plus V initial. It does have V initial. It's positive because it's up 33.09. The 3 fifths component times T plus 1 half. <clears throat> I'm in English units. So plus 1 half. 32.2, and that's negative 32.2 t squared. So in this uh, equation, the only unknown is t. I uh, might have to use a quadratic uh, formula. I'll, I'll do a little bit more math here. 16.1 t squared minus 19.853 t minus 3. So, so you know, use a quadratic uh, formula to, to solve for T is 1.369 seconds. Plug that back up there. I'll get a D of 36.2 feet. That was my answer. All right, so kind of step, take a step back and uh, think about this problem. Look at this problem. I was, I was wanting to solve for D, but, you know, I, D is nowhere in my work energy equation. 
Um, but it is in my projectile equations, but it can't use projectile from A to C. I can only use it from B to C because you can only use projectile when it's just in, in the air with, you know, it's just free, you know, flying through the air. Um, so I had to use work energy from A to B, projectile from B to C. One, one other thing to, to note, I mentioned it a lot. Uh, anytime we have something like G in our work energy, we already took into account that it was negative. So, so you, wouldn't, you wouldn't see me plug in a negative 32.2 uh, anywhere. But down here, back when we were doing projectiles, that acceleration, we haven't taken its direction into account. So why 